Ryan here with longrangeonly.com. In this video, we're going to talk about the new Revic range finding binocular. This is the Acura BLR 10 Bravo, and it's a 10 by 42. It's very compact. This is going to be my initial impressions because I am not going to give you a review until I've had at least a hunting season with them. But we are already getting a lot of questions on it, so I wanted to make sure I could answer some of them as quickly as I could. Let's go ahead and talk about uh, what it comes with. I don't do this often enough because I don't, I don't really think a lot of these things matter. They're not, they're not something I would buy a, a, a piece of gear for these extras, but it does come with eyepiece covers, and if you're going to run it, you know alone standalone it does come with a pouch it doesn't have any way to attach it very easily to uh, a belt or anything like that it also comes with a carrying strap and a cleaning cloth so for those that that matters to uh, there you go i will carry it in a bino harness so it's not those aren't something that I that I care about. Uh, it does come with a little plastic uh, threaded cap here on the, the end here. Uh, you just take it off, unscrew it, and then you can put a universal outdoorsman stud in, which is what I've got in here. Okay. It also has places where you can tether it to, which I would say would be a standard. And then it's got the battery compartment here. It's got uh, adjustment, eyepiece adjustments on both of them, which is standard for a range finding binocular just because their, their optics are different in each barrel. So I've done a little bit of ranging. I think this is on par as far as a range finder goes with the best out there. I would actually say it's probably going to be the best out there. And I'm not talking about ranging a rock at, at 7,000 yards because I don't know who cares. If you're an ELR guy, you're typically going to probably be given the known distance. Um, I don't do ELR, so maybe I'm wrong. But when I'm talking about the best range finder, I'm talking about where you're actually going to take a shot. I couldn't care less if it's range and barns at 7,000 yards. I, I just don't understand why people get hung up on that. So realistically, we're talking about ranging deer inside of, I would say, a thousand yards. I might stretch it out to 1,200 just, just for comparison's sake between, between optics. But um, the things that people want to know about are the range finding ability. I would say it's on par with the best, if not the best out there. I will get some field use this, this winter. Uh, we've had issues in the past with incorrect ranges in bean fields because the range finder wants to pick up bean stalks in front or trees behind no matter what mode that you use. The SIG 8K and the, the BR2 have seemed to eliminate that issue or all but eliminate it. It's very rare. We haven't missed any shots on animals uh, due to ranges since we've changed to those units. So um, that's one thing I will check out this fall because I just haven't had enough time with it. Uh, they have done several user interface improvements with this rangefinder. It uh, is a lot quicker to change some of the settings. But the biggest setting is going to be getting the wind in. And it's, it's a very quick thing, especially if you spend a little bit of time with it. You just hit these buttons. You'll get the vector, so you'll point where the wind is coming from. You'll hit the, I believe it's the fire button. This isn't going to be a how-to video, but then you do the wind speed, up, down, up, down, and then you hit the, the button that sets that as well. And it's very quick. So you can get a vectored wind. You can use your Kestrel, get a vectored wind, and put it into the optic, and it can be there uh, very quick. The solution is going to be fast. As far as ballistic solutions, I've had no problems with... Uh, the old Gunworks BR2 clear up, or the old Gunworks, uh, yeah, the BR2 to the BR4. And I, I may have said BR2 earlier when I meant BR4. So 
when we're talking about range finding capabilities, this is going to be very close to the BR4. So their ballistics have always been spot on for me. If you give it good data, it gives you good data. And the probably one of the best features in the user interface change from this over the BR4 is the auto brightness, which is a pet peeve of mine on the BR4. It's it makes it tough to use in that quick fading light because there could be a situation where you have good light and you you need the the brightness to be up a little bit and then as the light fades and you're trying to get on animals you need it down and it's not difficult to change but it when you get in the heat of the moment it is is a little bit more difficult than it needs to be this can be set on auto brightness I haven't done a lot of testing with it to see how it interacts to the external light conditions, but it seems to be working very good. Pretty confident in saying that this is gonna be the best range finding binocular that you can buy when it comes to the range finding aspect of it. Getting the correct range, getting the correct ballistics, getting the correct uh, solution. What people are going to have a lot of questions on is how good are the optics. So I'm just going to tell you right now that the design goal of this was to make a range finding binocular, but the emphasis was going to be on ballistic solutions and getting them, getting that animal ranged, getting you an accurate and precise solution. And so you can get that put into the gun, get it put into the optic and you can make the shot quickly. That was the number one design goal of this. The other things are bonuses. The good glass, the good clarity, the light transmission, those are all bonuses. So with a range finding binocular, there's going to be compromises. The, the barrel that's got the laser in it is just going to be inferior, no matter what, to a barrel that doesn't have the laser in it. As of right now, and I would say physically, it's going to be impossible to make them on par with each other because it is it is a light refracting mechanism and it's going to be impossible if not impossible to have it on par when you've got that extra piece of equipment inside of there this so i i obviously this is a initial impression so i don't have hours and hours and hours of glassing so my opinion could change a little bit when it comes time for the review but my initial impressions are that this glass is at least on par with the Zeiss RF. The, the, cl the color is a little more warm, I think, initial impressions than the Zeiss. Zeiss optics tend to have a little bit cooler uh, color rendition, more of a blue. Uh, I don't think that most people would really notice, uh, but I'm kind of a, a camera nerd, so... I do notice things like that a little bit. Um, it is a little bit warmer. The barrel with the laser in it is a little more blue than the one without it. Uh, again, I talked about that. The light transmissioner is going to be a little bit different in the, the barrel with the range finder. And it's that, that's true on every one of them. But the clarity... And the low light seems to be pretty much on par with the Zeiss RF. Uh, I have a lot less time with other optics like the Leicas and the Swaros, but I would say it's going to be on par with those. Those are going to be probably a little bit better, especially the Swaros. I just think that they probably have a little bit better edge to edge clarity. So when it comes to range finding binoculars, I, I don't think there's enough gap between these and those other options out there that I would choose. If I eliminate the fact that this is a better range finder, the optics are not gonna be noticeably different for me to choose one over the other. Uh, it's really kind of hard to, to put into words. You're obviously wanting a range finding binocular, so you're gonna have to accept that there are going to be compromises. So when you're comparing just the compromises, not the other features, I don't think that this compromises enough over something like a Swaro or a Zeiss that you're gonna notice. 
my initial impressions that the contrast are far better in this than some of those other optics out there. And when the light, light starts to fade, even though the image is darker, the contrast makes it easier to distinguish animals. Um, I've noticed that in the Revic spotting scope when comparing to the Swaro as well. And I, I'll have a separate review on that, an actual review on that, and we'll talk about that some more. When it comes to edge-to-edge -edge clarity, this is not going to compete with the Swaro ELs, and it's not going to compare with the Swaro uh, NL Pures. The edge-to-edge -edge clarity is just not the same. It does have a little bit of uh, vignetting, and uh, the optics just aren't as clear on the edge. When it comes to center clarity, they're on par with some of the best out there. Again, maybe not quite as good, but very close. If you want my opinion on these versus those others as just the binocular, when you're only comparing the binoculars, the thing that's going to hold this back the most compared to those others is the field of view. So I think this has got 321 foot at 1,000, something like a 10 by and El Pure is 399, and I think the Zeisses and the Swaro EL sit right in that 350 foot range. And so, if you're like me when you're glassing, you're you know you're in the mountains and you're trying to you're trying to find animals on another ridge or you know another drainage over you know two three miles, the field of view. It, I like to put them on a, a tripod and just glass the entire picture with my eyeball and then move over. So you're going to have to move a little bit more because the field of view is smaller. I don't think that is as big a deal as when you're trying, you're doing more of a spot and stock style hunt and you need the, the biggest picture you can as you're approaching animals trying to find out where the animal was as you're going up and over the coolies. Uh, more in the the rolling hills type of stuff and that type of hunt. And that, that situation is going to depend on your hunting style, but it is noticeable. Um, so I would say that 320 foot field of view at a thousand yards is probably going to be the biggest compromise over other optics. I'm going to have to spend more time with it to say that I would choose this over like a BR4 and the NL Pure or a Zeiss SF. Uh, I just can't say that right now. But when you compare this to other range finding binoculars, I, there is no doubt in my mind I would take this over them. Um, when it comes to all the feature sets, I just think this is a better option. The, the glass is going to be at, at least on par. Even if it's the, the last in the pack, which I don't think it is, I'm not saying it is, it's going to be close enough that it wouldn't be uh, the reason I would not choose the optic. And the range-finding capabilities destroy everything else in the range-finding binoculars. There is no comparison. When it comes to the, the app, the usability of the app, the quickness of getting all the things that you need to make a long-range hunt, getting the wind put into it without an external device, um, and I mean, you're obviously you're going to have to have a wind device, but you don't need a Kestrel Elite with all the other ballistic uh, information in it. You don't need an external device to get you the barometric pressure and temperature and all that stuff. This has got it in there. All you need is a wind speed. You can get that with a cheaper wind meter. So when it comes to the ballistic part of it and the range finding part of it, this is this just destroys everything in the category. Um, and like I said, when it comes to the optics, I think it's on par with everything else out there. This took a lot longer than I thought it was going to be um, video-wise, and I apologize, but uh, hopefully that'll head off some of the questions. Uh, again, I'm going to reiterate the design goal was to make the best range finding binocular that there was with the emphasis being on the range finding and ballistic portion of that and getting the solutions to the user quick. Uh, the other bonuses are the good glass, the, you know, the good light transmission, and the clarity. And I, I think it's done a really good job so far 
we'll talk about it more probably at the beginning of next year. I'll have a link below in the description to a thread on the forum. You can head on over there. You can ask me any questions. I'll try to go out in the field and get answers for you. Uh, specifically, if you ask the questions, more than likely I'm going to answer those as I use it anyways. And you can head on to that over to the forum and ask me questions. If you're not a member on the forum, it's quick, it's free, it's easy to sign up. Go ahead and sign up. There's a lot of great information on there, both from the editors as well as forum members. And we would love to have you there. Please like the video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and turn on notifications so you can be notified of future video releases. We appreciate you taking the time to watch. Have a great day.